Okay everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can actually make dust fly up on the moon. So one conspiracy theory that I've heard a lot from the moon, and I've got a lot of requests to try to debunk this theory, is that when the astronauts are walking in the moon, you can see that they kick up a lot of dust. So people say, well if there's no air on the moon, how is the dust flying around? Remind me to dust my camera too, will you? I don't forget to dust your camera. We'll keep track of that, please. <laughs> no, dead gummit. Hey, Gene, would you help? Would you go over and help twinkle toes, please, Gene? And the second one is, can you make a footprint in a vacuum if there's no moisture in the air to lock the particles together? So I want to try to replicate that experiment with my vacuum chamber here and some fumed silica. So fumed silica is about the same size as moon dust. Moon dust can be very fine. It's on average around 0.1 microns in diameter, whereas this fumed silica is around 0.05 microns in diameter. So this is a little finer than moon dust, but it should work well for our experiment. So how I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be using a shoe to drop on the dust in the vacuum chamber. And I have a magnet in it. I can drop it in the vacuum chamber. And we'll see if it can actually kick up dust. And as you can see, this is not my shoe. This is my daughter's shoe. So she gets to go to the moon. Okay, so first let's put in our fumed silica, and this stuff is extremely fine. I don't want to breathe it, so let me put on a mask. There we go. Okay, now we can't forget the shoe. Okay, we're going to go ahead and suck out the air. Three, two, one. Okay, so we're at a full vacuum on my gauge here, but I'm going to let it vacuum out for around 10 or 20 minutes to get all the air out that we can that's in here. Okay, I've let this sit at a full vacuum now. Okay, let's drop the shoe. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow, that really shot up. So one thing you'll notice too, is look how you can see imprints in there. So there's absolutely no water vapor in here, but the particles can stick together. But you can see in this completely dry environment here, you can make footprints. This is just dropping the pure magnet now. Three, two, one. Okay, now let's see what happens when we let the air back in. <laughs> Whoa. Probably just sandblasted my vacuum chamber. Oh, don't want to open that. Holy cow. Look how it just dusted everything. That is crazy. Like a fresh powder snow now. Okay, so you can see that we were able to kick up dust in the vacuum chamber, and we were also able to make a footprint in the vacuum chamber. So there's absolutely no reason why you should think that something can't move around or fly around in a vacuum. If you kick up fine particles, they'll still fly because you gave them some momentum, and so it doesn't matter whether they're in air or not. In fact, when they're not in air, they can continue moving better than when they are in air. The only thing that the air can help with is if the particles are so small that they can get caught up in the air, then they won't settle down, but they'll get just drifted around with the wind in the air. 
And also there's no reason to think why you wouldn't be able to make a footprint in a vacuum chamber. I don't know who the people are that think you need moisture to make a footprint, but it's not true. I guess if you're picturing like a sand castle, you need wet sand to make a sand castle, but that's the surface tension of the water that needs to hold those larger particles together. But for very fine dust, you don't need the surface tension of water in order to compact them together. You just need the friction of the particles themselves. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.